In this video we're going to look at multiplying by powers of 10. So we're going to start off with some real basic ones. So to start we could look at um, just something like 3 times 10. Okay, so with something like that, you're not immediately going to write that down and do long multiplication with it. It would just take too long. Plus, you just need to be in a spot that, okay, if I'm multiplying by 10, then 3 times 10 is 3. The 3 and 1 zero. So we add the zero on, 30. You could also see this as 45 times 100. Then I've got the 45 and two zeros, so 4,500. You wouldn't write this out in the uh, lattice method, which I guess you could do, and you could show that you get the same answer, but this method's just going to be too long for you. What you want is a method like this, where it's nice and straightforward. So if you had something like um, 4479 times by a thousand, then you have the 479 and three zeros. So we then have 479,000. So that's multiplying with tens, hundreds, and thousands. What if we're dividing? What if I turn these into divisions instead? Then we have 3 divided by 10. Okay? Now, we haven't gone on to division methods, so I'm not expecting us to use any kind of division method here. What I'm saying is that really, when we're thinking about dividing by powers of 10, it's all about moving the decimal point. 3 divided by 10 is 0 0.3. Effectively, the number 3 is 3.3. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, We just don't bother writing those zeros. We don't bother writing the decimal place because we're dealing with a whole number. But the number 3 can be written like this. If you divide by 10, the decimal point can be moved one step to the left. So when dividing by powers of 10, you're always moving the decimal point to the left. When you multiply, you're moving the decimal point to the right. So the decimal point moves, and we then have to write it as 0 0.3 rather than just 0.3. 45 divided by 100 works in a similar way. The decimal point is here and would get moved twice to the left because you're dealing with 100 with two zeros, two steps to the left. So we have 0 0.45. 479 divided by 1,000, the decimal point will move three places to the left. So you get 0 0.479. So, let's look at a couple more interesting examples. Let's say we're dealing with... Um, 32.6 and we want to times this by a thousand. Okay? So, first of all, remind, for, as a reminder, um, if you have this decimal point involved, then as you multiply by 10 or 100 or a thousand, the decimal point must move to the right. It moves to the left if you divide. So we know that the decimal point must move to the right. And we know it must move to the right three times, because we have three zeros. So 32.6 
The decimal point must move to the right three places. One, two, three. But what are these gaps? The gaps are going to have to be filled with zeros. So that then, what we end up with is 32,600 as our answer. What if instead we divide by a thousand? Now we know that it's going to move three places, but because we're dividing, it must move three places to the left. So if I write down 32.6, the decimal point must move one place, two places, three places. So this is that extra gap, which I must fill in with zero. The decimal point is down there, and so I need to write a zero on the front. So I can't just have 0 0.0326, it must be 0 0.0326. So we have 0 0.0326. Much like in the case with multiplying, give yourself some to try. Make sure that, you know, come up with a number with decimals in it, and then multiply by 10, 100,000. Try it on paper first and then check using a calculator.